Angelo here. Welcome to my channel, and welcome back to yours and my stream. So, I'm here again with my brother, Mono. Yep. And we are here to talk about the, I don't know if exactly this is when it took place, but it's the uh, Preach interview on Bay Class. It had, what, Noogie, it had uh, Tarkla Cat, and it also had uh, Rise. So, the three of them were interviewing uh, the new player experience, even though this guy is a seasoned video game and veteran. And, and I will be first to say, through my ignorance, I did not exactly know who Preach was. I definitely know who he is now. And he is a, a guy that I was not expecting to get. As I said in my previous videos, first off, when I first saw him doing the whole blind playthrough, that was the first time I saw him in that YouTube video. Then the second time was when he was actually playing, and it got me interested in seeing what his take was to see if he had any similarities in a similar way that I was trying to play, where this game has been out for almost 10 years? Uh, 20... 2013, 2013, right? 2013? Yeah, so almost 10 years. And with that, I was saying, if I just listen to everyone in chat, or if, if, if Mono and I just listen to everyone in chat, we're not going to have our own experience. What we are going to have is everyone else's experience. So, in a not-so-awesome way that Preach was able to do it, I tried myself to do it without any real guides. Now, granted, I still had Twitch chat, and I still read chat, and I still say what's up, and I still talk to everybody. But as I was saying recently in some of my other videos, I had times where a lot of people were trying to help me get more damage or do this or get that. Help you? Supposedly. A lot of, a lot of times could also be looked at backseating, uh, hard backseating, and sometimes I'd humor it, and I'd just be like, okay, sure, let's do it. And just like Rise would say sometimes, and uh, there was a part where Rise was talking about in this video where he said, like, you know, he was, I don't know if he was, if it was before the game came out or it was shortly after, he said he spent hours just looking at the skill tree, and he wasn't really even hype or anticipating the game. Just, he was just looking at it because somebody, somewhere, told him that's what he had to do. And I think to avoid that, and again, you cannot take away the genuine excitement, the genuine fun that preach is having you you can't people will pay millions of dollars to have that kind of excitement that kind of fun and that kind of sense of accomplishment and he's getting it from a free-to-play game like what, what what are your thoughts going from that mono well his uh obviously he's a he's a well-traveled mature gentleman he has had 30 years experience gaming i believe so and his his reward systems are extremely delayed. So it's pretty obvious he more than likely doesn't um, partake in a lot of social media and a lot of this and that. And he's very, he's very observant and careful with how he does everything. Um, when you watch him stream, it, it's almost like uh, it's almost like any of us when we first when we first play any uh, RPG style um, third person survival game and, and any type of those games from the late '90s to about mid 2000s. There is a point in time where you just learn the game. And he's he's very willing to stay in that phase for as long as possible. Um, nowadays, when when you struggle in a game, you instantly go to YouTube. You find someone who's who's been in the same spot to kind of bail you out. Um, if you're an older gamer before that, you, you went to GameFAQs. And I, I feel like he was not the type of gamer to go to GameFAQs or to uh, look up a guide on, on how to beat it. Especially with the with the blind playthrough he's doing now. Yeah. Well, again, I feel it's a a sense of the old. I that that stupid quote everyone says, but no one ever actually understands what they're saying is that you know those people who forget history are doomed to repeat it. People love to say it, but they don't actually know what the fuck it means. What it basically means is if you don't realize what happened in the past, since you don't know it, you're gonna do it again. <laughs> you're gonna do it again. So, sadly. I feel a lot of people are just, oh, I don't know what this is. 
someone does know, I'll just copy them. But what happens when those people that know aren't there anymore? Now, now what do you got? You can't look it up because those people aren't there anymore. <laughs> You're lost. Well, it, and, and it could very well just be a generational gap. Because for him, if he's been gaming for 30 years, I mean, this is a guy who, like, he might have had to deal with rotary telephones and no answering machines. So he, he gradually um, evolved with technology. Well, I, I'm sure there was at least the, the push buttons, but... Well, po possibly. I, 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 I've, I've used a rotary telephone way back in the day, at least once. That shit was forever. So, I mean, I don't think he had rotary. I'm, that, but that's, that's saying he's too old now. Imagine the mindset of someone who is born with all these options. From when you start going to school, you, if you already have a freaking cell phone and you can already have access to search engines, there no information is new. And all information is accessible. Like, it, it, it's right now, you can, there's tools, you can put in an equation, and it'll help you solve it. It'll show you the entire process of, of, of how to find uh, out what that equation is. Seriously. And, and well, and, and yeah, so that, that goes above and beyond the good old Texas instrument calculators. But if, the, and, and then the whole thing about this conversation is, who is this game made for? Is, is it made for someone who reward systems are based on instant gratification? Or is it made for someone who is willing to struggle and overcome obstacles and then through the experience of overcoming those obstacles, then becoming a veteran player only to find more obstacles and more obstacles? Because obviously he, he enjoyed all those tries beating Izaro. Whereas, I, I'm, I'm ready to admit it right now. I don't like labs. I don't like labs. I don't like trials. And for him, like, he's excited to do the harder trials and labs. I mean, like, even I, the, the thing that I hated the most was now, this is something where it's back and forth. Because I know we haven't really talked too much about what happened during the podcast, but we will start now. So some of the things that he was talking about were like things like if the game is too easy, it's just like a Super Mario Brother. It's made for anybody, anybody, anyone can play it. And uh, just to kind of finish on his point, uh, on Mono's point with the labs, this is what I said is like back and forth because I, I also do not really like labs. <laughs> and I also hate the fact that let's say you make it all the way to the end, you die, and now you got to come all the way back again. But I will admit there was also something he asked he said, how come the bosses don't respawn health? How come... Uh, yeah, why is that? And everyone on, on, on the podcast were just kind of like, yeah, that, that's it. And he's like, that, that's normal? Like, like, he was so utterly confused. Because, for instance, I've been watching Asmongold play some Final Fantasy XIV. And when him and his, and his like, party get wiped, boss is full back to HP. Full, full HP, but then they're right outside the boss zone. So they can fight him again, but they gotta do it again. Like... But in this game, the thing that he didn't understand is that he was in the black core, or as he called it, the, uh, the boss's butthole. And basically, he killed it. And as he killed that, he didn't get to see the death animation because he maybe was sitting on corrupted blood or he, something happened to him. He died the same time the boss died. So he respawns, comes back in, and then the boss is already gone. And he's like, oh, I missed the whole death animation. I don't, I don't know what happened. It's like, why is it like this? And, and even me, I, I didn't even think about this. That's such a... A common thing. You play any video game, and you don't kill the boss. The boss is back to full HP. You're dead. But I guess that's just an ARPG thing. That, that was Diablo. I, 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 it's I don't been think so. That was it's been so long since I played D two. I don't remember. But the way that they were talking about it, this is just how ARPGs are. Or, or at, at least that's how it is. Because again, yeah, he's not an ARPG guy. He's he's an MMO. He's guy. an MMO guy. But then again, th that stands. And honestly, by listening to this podcast. I am willing for next league. I'll play hard mode. I, I'm down. Let's, let's give it a shot because I feel my dumb ass is still going around picking up stuff off the floor. And if this is a significantly better, like significantly fewer items, but these items are worth more, 
I'm down to guinea pig it. I mean, they're probably going to use possibly the feedback or whatever that I'll have, but I'm willing to try. I mean, I'm already doing it anyway. I'm already excited to find any kind of boots that have automatically a 30% on it. I'm, I was never really a crafter, so hard mode just seems like something interesting for me. So I'm down to give it a shot. Well, if 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 that's the direction that they want the game to go in, I mean, you have already two players who absolutely love the game. Well, obviously, with Preach, he's streaming it pretty much. I, I don't know if he's streaming it full-time. He's pretty much streaming full-time now, right? For, for now, at Or least, is he just playing Path of Exile right now? He's Well, he's playing it, but he loves it, but at the same time, he's doing that subathon. So okay. So, guys, check out his subathon. I think it starts for him tomorrow. Okay. So. So or, it, or uh, like whenever you hear this podcast, uh, I don't know if I'll have it out by today, but he released a video saying that starting Monday he'll have a subathon. So then you have this guy, and then you have Asmin, but he only he plays it off stream, and he understands that his his play style doesn't match what's expected out of veteran Poe players. He takes his time through the acts. He doesn't rush to get to maps, and and he just kind of enjoys enjoys his time in the game, and if Maybe very possible that this is the target audience. Uh, we talked about it before that this game is pretty much uh, marketed towards people who really enjoyed Diablo 2. They always talk about Diablo 2. And, and even though there, there's a little pushback in, in a lot of the Q&As we've watched already, mm -hmm. it's like, well, maybe we don't care about Diablo 2. Maybe the population currently has more people who have never played that game. Yeah, like Matheo, right? He's like, that's a 20-year-old game. I don't know what that is. Dead game. Oh, dead game. That's exactly what he said. But it's... um, Yeah, that that's going to be something that a lot of the players may have to come to terms with. Um, This game might not be for you, because look at this guy. I mean, shit, even I, even I thought he was going to have a terrible time. It would, it would have taken him weeks to get through Axe, and he smashed it. And let's not forget, this is 3.15, the, the harder league. Oh, why are you making it so hard? Which also brings me another point he said. Like, I have a little note thing here. And basically, he's, he was talking about, um, uh, what was it? Again, I think it's just mindset. Completely mindset, because then he asked, because they were saying, oh, similar to WoW and the 50% player exodus. Now, that, that's a huge number, 50%. Now, down in PoE, it's, what, a 30% down or something like that. Or I don't know if they were saying it was down to 30%, but come on, it's leagues. Everybody leaves. But now he asked a simple, simple question, and it was the PoE exodus. Was that because, what, was it too easy, too hard? And his questions are so direct, so simple, and it's just like, wow. <laughs> And and now, granted, I believe Nugi's the one that responded to that. He's like, it's it's not so simple, but if you really think about it, it kind of is because what you could technically say is that because they kept saying it's harder. They, they everyone's saying, oh, it's harder. You're making it harder. You're making it this and more more tedious. Yada yada yada. But then, if you think about it, they want it to be easy. They want it to be easier. So they want it to be harder, but not really harder. They're saying they want it to be hard, but they want it to be easy so they can say it's hard. I, I don't know. That, that's, that's how it sounds to me. I mean, like, there could be certain things I'm missing, and obviously most people always call me an idiot in these videos anyway, so. <laughs> well, I, I don't remember the, the exact comment, but there was a guy who commented on one of our um, Q&A reviews and he said that he played a specific skill. He played it for like four leagues, and he min-maxed it, and then just all of a sudden that skill was dead. I think it was Herald of Agony. It might have been, yeah. So, so basically, a lot of the people that quit, they weren't the ones who played whatever the top builds were on PoE Ninja. They had a specific niche build that they liked, and the game allowed them to thrive and get to the end game content. So I will say I, I, I do understand that it sucks that you've played a certain way for, I believe this guy said four leagues. Four leagues, so. And then just all of a sudden, it, what he liked doing sucked. So come to this conclusion that 
okay, you had fun these four leagues, and now the game is going in a different direction. Let's say you had fun during the pandemic era. So you had fun during the pandemic era of Path of Exile. They they gave you something to deep dive into. Um, what whatever it was, delirium, harvest, whatever it was. And now it's it's time to get back on track. Uh, we're getting ready for PoE two, and this is this is the audience we want. We want old school gamers. We want people who want to overcome these obstacles. And and we we spoke about it before. Mm-hmm. The bosses you struggle against are the ones you remember. I mean, Forever. I mean, Forever. like like I'll, I'll bring them up again. Piety. Uh where you were already doing a, a bleed character at that yeah. time, but you didn't know how to fully min max well, it. Well, it was your first I, ha- I had shite defenses. Oh, well, yeah. So, so, so basically, you ran into kind of the same problem originally that that Preach had, but you just probably went yeah. all deep or all damage yep. and zero defense. So yep. you were quote unquote glass cannon. And, to and, the max. and I didn't understand movement because I was only using Leap Slam. So oh, then okay. there, there's Piety, there's Malachi, there's Innocence. Um, Yeah. That's those are pretty much the bosses I'll never forget. I mean, for me, I think it was mainly just uh, what was it at first the Brian King because I didn't know what uh, like, and then of course it was kind of like you know touching the oven is hot, and then I touched that wall, and I guess if you touch the outside wall you die, I, or you wander too far outside the wall, and uh, for me for sure recently was that three point one five Uber Zara on my shitty. Fucking chieftain slam tech slam build. But you you're also partying during that too. So oh, yeah. you had a lot more HP. True, I, I was also partying with move at the time, and yeah, at the end, man, I was sitting there, and, and I I want to say for like any boss fight, obviously majority of these bros that like know this game in and out would have beaten Uber Azaro in like a minute or less, or probably like, being realistic, if these guys are following like an SST build, that Spectral Shield build, they probably killed Uber Azaro in like two or three throws. I fought him for almost five minutes. And, and, and like, who, who does that? And obviously most people say, damn, you suck. <laughs> that, that's that's you, the, uh, the The wording is, or the terminology is, you do Z DPS. There's that too, yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and, and how about that, like, Something I was I never thought about, but as soon as I did that, I forgot who said it. I, th- I think it might have been Goatman. He was telling me, "Dude, you were fighting a raid boss. Your Uber Azar was a raid boss." And it, come to come to think about, it, like a month later, Preach, a highly what respected MMO player, a Mythic Plus raider, comes in and, and says, "Oh man, my best, my fair part." And and he's not to the Uber Azar yet. He's coming to that soon, but he was just fighting the Merciless one, and. He learned how to play that as if it was a, a raid boss or a Mythic Plus boss. And just, I was like, hey, man, I'm telling you, like, we come from two different backgrounds, uh, Preach and I, but we have very similar thoughts. And then, let's see here. I mean, Preach did also say something pretty good that, that, that got me. He was saying that, like, if you know too much, then, like, all right. I, f- I forgot exactly how he was wording it, but he was talking about how if you if you know every system, because like right now he's currently he's in the mode and he's like, oh, I want to learn, uh, I want to learn how to delve, I want to learn the temple, I want to learn, uh, you know, heist. He wants to learn that, but then he says eventually, once with once I know all the knowledge, he's like, oh, all the other ones crap. This is the best way to get the most, you know, whatever the best drops, loot, currency. You're just gonna do this. And he said, the problem, if you know that, that's your game. Because no one's going to touch any of the other ones. They're only going to go single focus that one thing. And that's, that's, that's kind of a big deal. And I think that's the reason why these leagues are here and they're trying to refresh and, and, and keep everything up to date and updated. Otherwise, players are just going to lose. Because imagine if like the best loot is in Delve. Everyone's going to stop doing everything else. They're just going to Delve. But I think that was the thing. Not anymore. Now it looks like everyone's doing other things. I don't. I don't know. Maybe Temple Nemesis Apple. Three. I don't even know what that is. But okay, yeah. See, Resident Evil Three. That's what I'm thinking. But yeah. Aside from that, I mean, let's see here. Uh. Oh, here's a good one too. When when they were asking him, 
for instance, what if you, because Breach seems to really like Flicker Strike. And when he liked Flicker Strike, he was like, dude, I really like the skill. And then Ryze asked him, so what happens if it got nerfed? And he's like, oh, yeah, like, I know it's different in WoW for you. And he's like, no, dude, it's not different in WoW. He's like, they destroyed my entire character. My whole character got wrecked. And he's like, oh, okay, so in that case, what'd you have to do? He's like, well, it sucks, but I had to just make a new character. And I think that's something people aren't... Versatility is also very good. Like I said, mindset is a huge thing. Mindset is a gigantic thing. And I think just by having the right kind of mindset, you can be like, damn, that sucks. But if I still like what I'm doing, I still like the game, I can make something new. I can make something. And that's why even I myself, I'm trying to make a new character per league. That way it doesn't get stale. Yeah, of course, I'm going to have difficulties, kind of like I am right now. But I always am going to come back because I'm like, okay, what else can I do? What else is new? But again, I feel the, the curse of knowledge is when you know too much, you, nothing excites you because you're like, oh, all right, I already know this. That, that's why like people that say like, you know, if you ever wanted a superpower and your superpower was like being an oracle or something or, or like a clairvoyant and you know everything, that's a horrible power. You know everything. There's, 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 there's nothing exciting. You're legit just like, oh, I already know what's going to happen. Oh, I know that person. Well, that. Humans are, are creatures of habit. You wake up, you probably have a routine, hopefully it's a healthy one, but let's probably be honest not. here. Most likely not. Most people look at their phones. Yeah. You check the same news, right? Yeah. And then after you've, you've snoozed your alarm three times, you, you finally get up, mm -hmm. all right? And then you, you go about your day, you, whatever your bathroom routine is, and then you go to work or you eat or whatever the hell it is. And then you expect the same thing possibly out of your entertainment. You have your favorite shows, you you have your favorite uh you have your favorite uh, personalities and then maybe you expect the same thing out of your game. And uh, and it may be very possible after watching this guy play the game that there's a lot of possibilities in this game. Hell, I'll I'll be completely honest, I just wanted to play a gladiator again. Um, I the first league I I played a Slayer, second league I played a Gladiator, and I just I wanted to play a Gladiator again. I knew I, the bleed pops are too are too cool, but by forcing myself to play something different, just like how Angelo is doing, um, I I found I found a whole new spectrum of possibilities, and and now next league, I mean, sure I I might play a Gladiator, I might, but then there's all these other options, and. And you don't have to restrict yourself to doing any one thing in this game. Anything can be rewarding. Yeah. You don't have to juice up your fucking maps and do Nemesis 3 and fight beyond monsters and whatever the fuck. You don't have to do that. Someone may have found something very profitable doing that. But you don't have to do that. And not only that, even if you want to do something else like Heist, you can still find shit for... Uh... What is it? The level Del. 83 contracts. And, and, and uh, you could still find, Del. yeah, you could still find all sorts of different things. So something that um, Preach was also talking about. It's like, you can tech, oh, I don't like doing this thing. I want to do this thing. And it, you could still get other things with that. So you could still get stuff that give you fossils. You could still find other things that give you uh, heist things. You can still find other things that give you um, delirium things. Like everything, it, they never shoehorn you. And that's something that he hated in uh, WoW, because that's what WoW did to him. And another thing, um, the thing that I respect the most about him is when he was talking about, like, starting the game, he was talking about how people were telling him, oh, all right, no spoilers or nothing, but you have to do this. You have to look up this. You got to know what this is. You got to do this and that. And he said he just deleted all those messages. He's like, no, I, I can do that. He's like, and, and right now I'm living proof. He beat Act 10. He's already in maps. Uh, I think tier, tier seven. sevens, tier sevens, no guides whatsoever. So all these people, and, and that was another question I had, because Rise is the exact opposite. Rise took all that. He said, they, they told him, hey, you need to learn this, 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 this. You need to go on, you got to look at the skill tree, you got to do this, this, this. So he never even played the game. He just was so, he was hardcore study. He was cramming. And I don't know about you, whenever I cram for a test, you know, in school or whatnot, I forgot everything. As soon as, as, soon as the test was over, I, and I didn't like it. I didn't care about it. 
And I don't know if that's a direct reflection of how a player's mindset could change later. Because look at Preach right now. He's just doing his own thing, whatever. If he fails, messes up, it's fine. He's going to learn it, and he's going to learn it at his own pace on his own time. But if Rise was shoehorned and forced to learn all this stuff before even starting, before even playing the game, I, I feel like that's, that's not the best way to do it. And if anything, I think you're going to hate the game. And I don't want to say he hates the game, but he definitely has a different viewpoint in comparison to Preach. And then at the very end, I know I'm jumping around everywhere right now, guys, but at the very end, Preach asks him, uh, or they ask Preach, is like, oh, you know, you lost touch with WoW, or was it Tarkley Cat? I can't remember. But then Tarkley also asked him, you know, just like us, we might have lost the magic when we were playing Path of Exile since we played it for so long. And you lost the magic for WoW for playing it for so long. But what do you think we can ever get it back? And real quick, Preach just went, no, no, you, you can't. You just know too much. I mean, sure, there can be a new expansion, but you literally know too much that you can never, ever have that magic back. And that is what I feel a lot of players that makes them drop off because they're trying to cram and learn all the stuff that they're, they don't get their own, their personal introduction to the game. They get someone else's. They go to University of Ziz or they go to you know anything like that and they learn their version of the game. They don't know what their own version of the game is. You're, if you play a build, you're playing that person's game. And good or bad, whatever you feel, that other person that made the build is what you're playing. It's not your build. It's not your experience. You're borrowing an experience. And in my opinion, I think that's the biggest disservice to yourself. Again, just look at Homeboy when he beat fucking the, <laughs> the Merciless Azaro. You... Dude, he, he spit so much. He was so excited. He threw his headset off and he's spitting. He's wiping his spit off his mouth. He's just like, dude, he was hype. Genuine hype. I don't know if a lot of players even know what that is. Well, it's sad, really. The whole thing is, is you, you, follow, you follow a build and you have an expected result. Okay, it's a video game. Why would you want an expected result out of a video game? You go to work, you have an expected result. You go to the toilet, you have an expected result. Yeah, sometimes. Okay, sometimes. <laughs> you, you might have some bumps along the road. But generally, the way he goes in, in, into video games is obviously the, the, his delayed gratification mm -hmm. and his... His willingness to learn, to learn and discover and overcome obstacles. And, and, and I hate repeating myself over and over and over. But if you go into the game every single league expecting to do the same thing, because you know, are creatures of habit, mm -hmm. and expecting the same result, this may not be the game for you. Thank because you. honestly, I don't think in 3.16 that I'm going to be able to play the same Gladiator I played in 3.14. I don't think so. Probably and not. I may have missed the uh, I may have missed the opportunity this league to play the Spectral Shield Throw Gladiator. But by widening the spectrum, by choosing another class and ascendancy, I've now opened up myself for the next league. So just in case the the OP build that I that I think is super fun, if it gets nerfed, I have another option. And and if this is not something that players want, you know, just like you said, you're not gonna have that experience. You're you're not gonna just rediscover your love for this game. This this may just be another routine on your calendar. League start, play for a few weeks, move on to something else. And you know what? That's completely fine. Well, you can also put it this way. I mean, I know all of you guys that I'm sure you've heard this. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over again, expecting a different result. That's well, also Far Cry, Far Cry, what, three, I think? Terrible. Three? But yeah, there you go. So, But they don't expect a different result. Well, they well, they well, expect no, no, to no, get the challenges they, and then... They, they do expect a different result. The different result is that they experience something. 
that, that that's that's what it is they're looking to experience something what it is i don't know but like you said they're gonna get the exact same thing because they're following the same build as everyone else unless so, the shit gets nerfed <laughs> unless it gets there but then guess what they're all gonna experience the same thing oh my build got nerfed. it's not even your build it's it's whoever's build it's it never belonged to you you were just a renter that's all you are you're a person that put it on lease well you're right because if if you had Put together that build yourself. If you looked through the entire passive skill tree, if you looked at every single viable item and every single viable unique and all the different cluster jewel combinations and all the best basic jewel combinations, you would know how to min max that build. You're right. If it's the same freaking build like like the build William went, Enki's art like arc lightning build. Apparently that build's been around since. 3.10 or something uh, again i don't even know what that so is so it if if that's the way that they're playing again you're gonna get the same thing everyone else is getting this may not be the game for them you know it, there may be a point in time where the league begins and there are no built guides in my opinion i think that's the best way to do it and that's why again i'm going hardcore like, after watching this and seeing his new player reaction and just seeing how, how excited he is, I want to play a game where I'm excited like that again. We are playing a game where and, we're and, excited. And, 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 and I'm not going to lie. I am still excited about it. But, like, like, what? If you think about it, just logically, that's a sense of accomplishment. Yes, I'm not going to hardcore because I, I know I'm going to die. I, I tried my zero death run. A lot of people in, don't go to hardcore. You know, and and yeah, so I'm not going to hardcore because like I know, and not to mention I died twice because I disconnected, and then just like I was in a tier 14 or 15 map, and then just like when I disconnected, insta death. Like <laughs> that might have been the day where we had uh, we had maintenance. Oh, like like what Steam yeah. maintenance or internet? Maintenance? The internet maintenance. Yeah. So yeah. either which way, yeah, I died twice to that. And I'm like, well, shit. So now I've this league, I've died 20 times, which again. My my best record so far. Only died twenty. Maybe times. the sun let off some solar flares or something. You know, Who yeah, knows? yeah. You know, climate change, whatever. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I mean, guys, there's so many things I'd like to talk about. But I mean, obviously, there's a lot of good things that I agree with him on. Now, there are some things that he doesn't agree with me on. I actually sat through all the bullshit text, and now, granted, he admits the voice acting is fucking terrific. It is amazing. Problem being. Is that you, he said you go playing a video game where you're like 250 miles an hour and then you come back to town and it's like, hello. This, I, I know exactly what he's talking about. He's, he's probably talking about, um, oh my God, I forgot his name. He was the poet and, and fucking. Uh, uh, Bestel. Bestel. Yeah, he was Bestel. He was probably listening to Bestel going, are you fucking kidding me? He's like, was not. There was, yeah. Well, you didn't want to miss anything because yeah. if you if you play an MMO <laughs> and you miss a little clue or, or a nugget for a quest, you can completely fuck yourself. Well, he, and that, you might not be able to, to complete the quest. That's what he did. In the end, he was like, okay, I'm checked out. I'm out of here. So, <laughs> I mean, and yeah, so he doesn't understand the story. I'm, I'm a loser that actually does kind of understand the story. I actually sat through most of the dialogue. So, <laughs> I, I thought Grigor was a knight. I didn't know he was a mutant. Dude, he's like a 50-50 guy. Like, yeah, I, I thought he was and, a mutant like, with red armor. He's like <laughs> slurping up at like half of his face, dude. Like, that was amazing. I made that video about uh, fucking poor boy Gregor. You know? Yeah, I know. But, That's how I found out he wasn't a red knight. He was a freaking mutant. Yeah. I, I'll be I, honest. I just zipped through all the fucking dialogue. I'll be yeah, honest. Feels bad, man. See, see <laughs> I, I'm the only loser that knows this. I'm the... Oh, wow. Okay. There's a small group of people who really enjoy the, the dialogue. And oh, yeah, the voice oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Here, I, I, I'll guarantee to you that the people that know... About Gregor and actually listen to as much stuff as I have. The Red Knight and the Red Knight, yeah, <laughs> like like our number is probably lower than the people that beat Cirrus. Okay, I I can guarantee <laughs> that. Oh Jesus, but <laughs> oh man, so that's one thing that we didn't disagree, uh, we didn't agree on. So that's that's kind of you know sad, but uh, I definitely feel. Uh, well. The thing that he was also talking about was like stash tabs, and he said for the amount of playtime he got, he's happy with it. Now, Ten hours. Ten yeah. hours was when he started spending money on the game. Yeah, and he bought some doggos. So aside from that, though... Those dogs are expensive, dude. Like 100-something yeah. credits? Uh, some might be higher than that. Yeah. Well, he bought, I think, the $60 pack because he has the full full set. But I remember 
I think it was Tarkley saying that PoE is more of a hardcore thing, while WoW was more for the casual. And then he was talking about how, like, since he also talked to the devs of WoW, he was saying that, like, in their eyes, they were looking at the 1% of Mythic Raiders and stuff, and they were saying, yeah, that's what they think, but that's only a small percentage. Not everybody's into that, you know. But then they were saying, like, PoE is reversed. And, you know, so may maybe he's correct, maybe he's not. But, yeah, going back to, like, stash tabs and everything, he says, as long as there's no real crazy thing that happens as far as, like, more stash tabs for the money or whatnot, it's fine. But, yeah, he said for the amount of time and the just how much fun and how much he was enjoying the game and just loving the game, totally worth for the amount of money that he gets. So he had to support the game, at least pay for it that way. And then uh, kind of running through here, I know this is going on a little long, guys, but uh, see here, like, hmm. Oh, he asked the, the guys, like, he was saying... When he finished the campaign, he, that was one of his goals, did it. But now he wants to, he's like, is it weird? I still want to play more. And then obviously they're doing their best. That, props to those guys for not spoiling anything. Although you can kind of see they wanted to. They were like, you know, they were saying that, you know, um, that, that's good. Because, I mean, like, a lot of people that play a video game, they get to the end, they're like, oh, I'm done. And that's the biggest thing. That's what Path of Exile has been trying to go. That's why they're trying to do, you know, the game is to be played forever. And the whole thing about it is that, like, if the game was so easy and you make it to the end, you're like, God, that was shit. I never want to do it again. But Preach, you know, pretty much a professional gamer is like, oh, dude, I, I want to play more. I want to see what else is there. And then basically um, they ask him, so what would be the one thing that'll make you quit? And just like, oh, Path of Exile, I'm done, whatever. And he says if he gets to a point where he's basically doing the same old, same old, grinding the same bosses that's just a little bit tougher to get a piece of gear or, or a grind fest or gear grind fest, that gets them just a little bit stronger just to beat the same area, the same boss, to get a little bit stronger, to get the gear that's a little bit stronger. And he's like, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm done. He'll be out of there at that time. So they said, but in reality, where he's at, he's probably going to play the game forever. <laughs> that's what they were saying. And then they were saying that uh, for him, the next one is like, uh, oh, you found a watchstone with Xana? He's like, well, just uh, you know, keep on doing some maps and you might, <laughs> you might find something else. Although, actually, he hasn't done Blight yet. Yeah, I think he has to do a Tier 5 map to do Blight, possibly. But we'll see what happens when he does Blight. I I think he'll like Blight. I, Blight's I, I, really fun. I, I think he'll like Blight, for, too. For people who aren't familiar with Path of Exile systems, Blight is like... It's a tower defense. Yeah, it's real fucking hype. Although, although it could be a little bit longer, because like sometimes the, the spots are like right next to your yeah. fucking thing, and you're like, shit. And then sometimes they pincer attack you. Yeah, it's pretty rough. <laughs> well, that's that's another thing. It, it was an obstacle we wanted to overcome. And once we kept losing, we were like, all right, uh, I need to hunker down and figure out how to beat this thing. Mm -hmm. and, and then, of course, one of the biggest things we learned was we can imbue our rings. And, and again, everything has a, a new system. Are you willing to learn it? And again, adaptation is a big thing. Um, and just some people, if you... <laughs> I mean, I hate to put it this way, but I get it. Guides are good, but I always say get to the maps. Get to the maps using your own build. And then you can realize, man, I fucked this up. I fucked that up. And just like, oh, what if I did this? And then look at a guide, but don't build your whole entire being based off a guide. Enjoy and learn what it is on your own. Try it. See what you like about the character, which is what I want to do. My next character is going to be, I'm pretty sure, a ranger, dual, dual wielding ranger, and uh, yeah, I, I think hard mode. I, if not hard mode, I'll have that one in regular mode, and also do one in, on the side mode with with hard mode. I don't know. We'll we'll see what happens, but yeah, a dual wielding ranger type character. I, I don't even know what class. I know it's not going to be a dead eye because she's not going to be using a bow, but yeah, so. Another thing that I thought was interesting and amazing with this guy, this guy actually consulted the menu. Now, I'm not going to lie. I did use the menu and the glossary in the beginning when I was learning about, like, vendor recipes because I didn't understand. I still don't know what the fuck they mean by focused. Because I see a lot of, like, uh, things. So I'm the same thing. Like, he's thinking, like, what the hell is a ward? Oh, that's funny that he looked that up because they just introduced it in this in this Expedition League. So it's not in the glossary. So that's that's pretty hilarious and... 
<laughs> things like that. But in addition to that, he was also talking about how like this overall community has been some of the most well, welcoming community he's ever had. And he said there have been times when some people say, hey, fuck off, get out of our community. This is our game, yada, yada, yada. And um, also, I thought it was funny because he doesn't really look at Twitter or whatnot. But then when he saw some of his some of his Twitter messages, just all the elitists coming out saying, you suck, bad content. What are you doing with this? Oh, two hours in a lab. You're an idiot, yada, yada, yada. And it's like, I've gotten a lot of those, not to that extent, but somewhat similar in in like my videos that I've seen. Or just people in general that pop in my chat, you know, either try to backseat me or tell me I'm bad. Fine, yeah, I'm bad. Again, I haven't played it for 30 million hours. I've only played it for, at this point, almost a thousand. Yeah, and I still suck. Guess what? I'm playing it my way. But, Mono, anything else that you can really think of? Because, like I said, this one's been going on pretty pretty long. Hey, but I, yeah. Just so. like you said before, and uh, Rise Cutie said, games are for fun. You know, I Rise... I don't know if you ever heard this or listened to it. I was like, man, you're saying exactly what I said. <laughs> so props to you on saying that, Rice. You know, because I was going to say, yeah, dude, like a lot of people just, they forget. It's, it's a game is supposed to be fun. And, you know, it, it kind of sucks that you could see that the magic and luster out of the, the panel was at Noogie, Tark, and uh, Rise. Suppose, I guess, the magic isn't there. It, it, there there's no curiosity. There's nothing new. And maybe you just got to play it different. Maybe just literally start from scratch. Or Path of Exile 2. Very true. Once PoE 2 comes out, maybe that's your shit. Maybe that's the one you're going to get. But like I said, guys, I hope you guys enjoy this rambling. So, <laughs> But let us know in the comments below what you guys think. Mono, any closing thoughts on this one? Games are for fun. Damn, nice and easy. Asala is fine. Well, when we see her more often, I don't even people think think people know who that is yet. She's P the hottie in and, POE, and POE 2. Act 2. Bye, bye. Alright, guys. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you guys out there. Later. Freeze! Who are you? What are you doing here? Hold your fire! I'm a human!